This video is brought to you by the good folks at KEH. Not only is KEH the oldest and biggest at what they do, buying and selling exclusively used camera gear of all sorts since 1979, but they do it well with integrity and both a 180-day warranty and 21-day return policy, free shipping on transactions over 49 bucks. Which is why, because they make it as futz-free a process as possible, they are our go-to whenever we are looking to fund new purchases by selling our own gear or buying that special used piece of kit properly graded and checked when we want to go quirky or old school. Check them out using the special links and 5% discount or bonus code in the video description below. Thank you, KEH. There can be hidden costs for insisting upon being first with the newest, but I can handle it. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today I will respond to those of you who requested a follow-up report on my new Leica M11. Because while my first response was, why bother? I already told you in a previous video exactly why I liked it, how much I liked it, so much so that I bought one with my own hard cash. Well, there is value from additional time with any new object of affection. So here's a quick take. First, I love it. Image quality is spectacular. Next, because I ordered mine in black, which means an aluminum top plate, it is lighter than a silver M11 or the M10 series, especially noticeable, by the way, over the course of walking 10 miles a day on the streets of New York during our street photography workshops. The USB-C port is a wonderful addition. Even if I forget a charger, I always have one for my laptop, so I'm set. The 64 gigabytes of internal RAM is a very nice to have. It saved my ass on multiple occasions because I was so focused on going out and shooting that mundane things like checking uh, to see whether or not I put an SD card in made me chafe. And the ability to quickly set ISO by pushing in the rear dial sped things up significantly over the M10 series. The lenses whether it's an M11 or not, are so small that I can carry all of them, 24, 35, a pair of 50s actually, and a 90 in a hip pack. The VisaFlex 2 is a dramatic improvement over the Type 20, but because I use the 11 for urban landscape where I'm often focusing at or near infinity, I find to my delight that I am often leaving it off the camera, relying instead on the rangefinder, or when a real-time view is required with, say, my 24 or 90 millimeter lenses, the rear screen. This has the salutary effect not only of making the total package smaller and lighter than I'd anticipated, much smaller and lighter than my SL2 kit, but of extending the battery life, which is excellent to begin with. I ordered the grip as well, and it is a far superior implementation to the grip for our CL. It allows us to take out the battery and or SD card without the need to first remove the grip itself, and the built-in Arcus Swiss compatible foot means one less thing I have to carry. It is... Highly recommend it. On the other hand, the initial implementation of the highlight weighted metering was just wrong. No big thing. I expect any new camera to have teething pains, and it has already been addressed via firmware. More importantly, the sensor offers so much resolution, so much dynamic range, so many tantalizing possibilities that I had to upgrade my lens kit buying since I couldn't afford even one Apo Summicron 35, never mind the 50 Apo and Apo Tell it 135 3.4, three of the latest and actually quite compelling, much less expensive Voigtlander Apos instead. At the wide end, I tried the 15 millimeter super wide Heliar, but I returned it because it just can't keep up with the M11's 60 megapixel sensor. There may be a super Elmar in my future. So yes, this has turned out to be more expensive than I'd anticipated. Then there's this, because I love photographing people when autofocus makes a big difference the way I shoot, because I love shooting at night 
when IBIS makes a big difference the way I shoot, and because I love shooting in bad weather. When weather sealing makes a big difference, although, okay, fine, I don't like going out in really bad weather. The M11 does take a backseat to my SL2 when any of these conditions obtain. Although, sometimes I take both kits with me. The SL2 with the Aposumicron SL35, and usually either a Sigma 65 F2, 85 1.4 Art, or 92.8, maybe a 24 3.84, whatever it is. The M11 just with my 24 3.8 Elmar, but that's getting heavy. Finally, and unfortunately, there are two much more significant issues. A. M11s are rare as hen's teeth these days. The black M11 is backordered at B&H and Adorama, listed as out of stock at Leica Soho in New York, listed as pre-order only in Leica Store Miami. I couldn't even access Leica Store San Francisco's website. You get the idea. I assume the silver M is the same. B, the most significant issue of all. My M11 died less than a thousand frames in, and I'm still waiting for a replacement more than a month later. Now. I'm not upset. That would be a waste of emotion to no one's benefit. And this is such an impossibly first world problem that I'd be embarrassed if I were. The reality is that this kind of thing is not uncommon with new and ambitious product launches, cameras or anything else. At least it's not Chevy recalling all of its Bolt EVs because they explode. Toyota recalling its BC4X because the wheels fall off. Canon for eliminating the multifunction bar on the original EOS R altogether, you get the idea. It usually is a good thing to let the dust settle before buying the first generation of anything, but in this instance, I just couldn't wait. And the shots I did get while I had it were worth it. Still, I would have been remiss had I not shared this with you, so there you go. In the meantime, you may know where I'm going with this. A used M10, original, PDR, or monochrome, is thoroughly debugged, and you can get one now for a lot less than a new M11 when you can find one. Just over 5,000 instead of nine for a base M10, about 7,000 for an M10 monochrome. And of course, KEH is a good place to check them out. Just saying. A big shout out to KEH for sponsoring this video, a great resource for finding just this kind of gear. Check them out using the special links and 5% discount or bonus code in the video description below. Thank you, KEH. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below because this is an incredible audience. If you'd like a copy of our Streets of New York, the book, head over to www.3bmep.com slash books. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one video session with me for a portfolio review, explore or hone your artistic voice, select gear and more, sign up at www.3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, consider supporting our work by using our no-cost-to-you affiliate links down below, picking up some official three blind men and an elephant swag at 3bmep.threadless.com, sending coffee money via PayPal, or best of all, join us as a patron over at Patreon. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.